I mean, it's inconceivable for any Western democracy to subsist even for 10 years more if we didn't have, through progressive taxation, a steady transfer of resources from rich people to poor. Well, I consider that we can begin to talk about the world environment and about safeguarding our planet when we, the rich nations, are giving in perfectly formal, institutionalized tax assistance. Oh, at least 1% of our gross national product in development capital for the poorer nations, I would go higher myself. You see. We've got to stop lecturing them while we sit back and in growth, 80% of the world's income for 20% of the world's people. And that, I think, is the critical thing on this development environment issue. It is possibly the beginning of an era in which uh, uh, this vision of the planet that you see from the moon, a single, alone, full of light, full of life, and the only single planet that's got these qualities, that that vision, especially among the young, can mean a redirection of how people think about this problem, because you will not create a community unless you've got some moral commitment. And moral commitment needs some very stern underpinnings, because we ain't moral easy. This lecture series celebrates our founder, Barbara Ward, who was a landmark thinker and broadcaster, author of many books, including Only One Earth. And her insights on the urgent need to bring together environmental prosperity and economic well-being would be of great value as we grapple with today's difficulties in addressing poverty and climate change. to end with two short quotes. The first reminds us of the common principles running through all human belief systems. Both farmers in Ghana and native North Americans say of the earth that this land is a sacred trust placed in our care for the sake of coming generations. The second is from Barbara Ward herself who in her book, Only One Earth, said, We have forgotten how to be good guests, how to walk lightly on the earth, as other creatures do. Let's learn to be better guests on this earth. When we reach the ultimate of power, which we have done, we can only respond by having the ultimate of community, which is a single planet. And that is where self-interest, moral interest, and sheer technical fact coincide. Many politicians are frightened to face their constituents with this kind of a truth. They have a fear that if they support the idea of a more equitable distribution of the world's resources and so forth, that they would not be voted back into office. What do you say to them? Well, I would say, first of all, that if you take some of the Western democracies, Canada, my own country, Britain, Holland, all the Scandinavian countries, France up to a point, all these countries have now formally agreed that by 1975 they will give 1% of gross national product in aid to development. And one reason why they're doing that is because their electorate would no longer accept the idea that you shouldn't do it. I recall still in my childhood in Europe how we saw black and gray and yellow chimneys 
uh, billowing smoke from from factory, uh, open waste dumps in the countryside, filthy, untreated wastewater running into rivers and ponds. That is not sort of the sight that my children have been sort of raised to see. This is no longer the case in most of Europe of today. And that shows us how much we can actually achieve in just one generation's time. In short, everywhere, no matter how different the countries and the societies are, the story is basically the same. As the climate changes, things become more and more unpredictable. That we can cope with in the rich societies, uh, but it's much harder if you are a developing country, if you're least developed countries, and of course, as always, the most vulnerable parts of the population will be hit the most. Now, it seems to me that the biosphere in which we share a climate, we share systems, we share ocean, and we cannot escape it, could be the physical, scientific, and technical underpinning of a moral community, because we tend to be moral when we have no further choice. It is good also to participate in this ceremony, which has honored three distinguished citizens of the free world, President Pusey, Father Bunn, and our friend from the world of freedom, Lady Jackson. great is the shortage of capital, so obstructed are the means of development, that they won't even be able to learn from our mistakes. That is the thing. That would be the ultimate tragedy. I mean, for us to go and make the mistakes and then no one to learn from them, that really would be a cosmic bad joke, wouldn't it? <laughs>